you know, you have accolades that you can speak to, you know, in terms of business. So right, right. I think that's huge. I mean, top 50 in Central Ohio. Right. That's a big deal because not a lot of people can say that. It is so hard to get a contract, to get a client. You can knock on a door and knock on a door and knock on a door for literally seven years. <laughs> so you have different sides of the staff in the industry. Okay. okay. You have the employee side, temporary associate side, and then you have the client side. Uh -huh. So you got challenges with each one of those. But you do your due diligence on getting the people that they want. Mm -hmm. If they say they want, you know, 10 people and they got to be this type X, Y, Z about them, you got to try to fill that to a T. Welcome back to the Let's Evolve for Tomorrow podcast. I'm your host, Tyrone, and we help aspiring new and existing entrepreneurs excel to the next level by inviting other aspiring new and existing entrepreneurs to the podcast to offer knowledge and information on how to get to the next level. So today we have Juan Lee with us. He is the owner of Sterling Staffing. He's been in business for about 10 years. Right now, he has a lot of information, a lot of golden nuggets that he's going to give us on how he got started and just being a small business owner and entrepreneur in general. But without further ado, I want to introduce Juan Lee. Juan, how you doing, sir? Well, how are you? Good. I appreciate Thanks you for, for joining the podcast. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for joining. So yes, if you sir. don't mind, just give us a brief introduction in the background. Well, again, my name is Juan Lee. I am from... Pittsburgh area, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Um, I've been in Ohio for 23 years, came in there, came to Ohio uh, to go to school at DeVry in March of 2000. Got a background in uh, electronics, um, graduated from DeVry. I worked for AEP for a while, some different different step there, um, started in the call center there and then went to the engineering department down the Chillicothe area, commuted there daily. I did not move. <laughs> 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 and um, what brought me back to Columbus was the gas hike when the gas prices spiked up from a dollar and some change up to two dollars some change. And they did not go back down, and my raise was not coming for another six months or so, and they weren't going to give me a, a cost of living raise. So it was time to come back up, and I got on with a staffing company, and they wanted me to be an on-site manager at one of their clients. So that's where I got my start at um, in the staffing industry. Okay. So let's talk about... The glitz and the glamour first, right? Let's talk about <laughs> where you are now, where your business stands now. I mean, you know, I've been in your building before, very professional staff. I had a chance to meet Quentin and just you or someone else that I've, that I've been in contact with as well. I can't think of her name, but it's one of your other staff members. That would either be Kiriana or Rihanna. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I didn't catch the names, but I just know walking in, it was a pleasant experience. I see all of the opportunities you have posted up as far as job opportunities that are out there. So just kind of tell us where you stand right now as far as your, your agency is concerned. Uh, first off, I don't know about any glitz and glamour. <laughs> 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 but um, we are, well, we didn't post it, but we are uh, one of the top 50 minority-owned businesses in central Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uh there's a different there's a lot of different variables that go into that but um that's off of columbus business first okay yeah um we did not make it this year only because i did not submit the data but data wise we would have qualified um for that okay we're usually right there around 20 give or take top 20 give mm -hmm. or take so um it's good being included in that book and seeing your name in that book, you know, year in, year out, um, you know, make, let you know that the work that you put in there is all worth it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so. So, Chillicothe, so you're from Pittsburgh, right? Yes. How did you land in Chillicothe? <laughs> uh, Why not Columbus? Well, the was in Columbus, uh -huh. but so, and the call center 
is in Columbus as well. Okay. As far as AEP. Okay. Uh, American Electric Power. So I worked at AEP while I went through school, mm-hmm. and uh, a job opened up once I got my degree in Chillicothe. I interviewed for it, and I got it, but I did not want to move to Chillicothe. <laughs> okay. So, so, yeah, that was out the book, so out of the question. Gotcha. So you're working at AEP. You left, you left AEP. Where'd you go after that? On-site manager uh, for a um, staffing agency okay. at one of their clients here in Columbus, Groveport area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how did you transition into, where did the thought even come from to start your own staffing agency? Uh, that's a variable of things. Like uh, a couple of the girls from the other agency, uh-huh. a couple of the ladies from the other agency, it was just time to move on. So we decided to start another agency, which was Sterling Staffing. Okay. Yeah. So where'd you get all of the, the information from, the know-how, the knowledge to even know where to start or begin with creating a staffing agency? <laughs> so that was mostly them. You know, I had some on-site management skills, but they had the extensive background in it. Okay. They have a further background than I have in it. I mean... I'm a baby in the industry as far as they're concerned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so they were already working for a temp agency. Correct. Okay. I worked with them. Okay. Yes. So you started it. So what's the what was the first step? Did you find a building? Did you work out of your home to begin with? Oh, no, no, no. We started, found a building, and okay. that's the same building we're at now, same location. Okay. We have not moved, not one time. Okay. And um, just got a couple of things, like copier, got our... Um, computers together and we already had the material we knew what material we wanted we wanted mm-hmm. um we took a couple of clients <laughs> okay and the rest was history okay yeah so when you start something like that in order to be in compliance i'm assuming there's like some type of like state regulations and stuff like that around state staffing agencies right or no regulations yeah as far as like to be in compliance with with the state in order to even have a, a, state, a staffing agency or no, no 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 just you know just your business license and stuff like that oh so stuff. just normal stuff yeah, oh, yeah. okay yeah. so it's really and i don't want to make the simplify this but it sounds like it's really you find a building you find some corporate clients to say hey we want to go into partnership with you we find some people you find some people to fill those positions correct Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. So how did you learn how to, like, draft the contracts when approaching these corporate clients and figuring out how to the payment structure? Well, I don't want to get too technical, but okay. there's a markup on everything on the, on the industry. So you have a pay rate and a bill rate. Okay. Um, obviously, your bill rate is going to be higher than the pay rate. The pay rate is what you're going to pay your employees. Mm-hmm. Bill rate is what you're going to bill the client. There has to be a markup. You have to go above and beyond. You know, it has to be worth your while. Okay. Uh, cause, because you have to deal with the insurance, the workers comp, things like that that you're going to eat. And so you have to the, uh, bid in accordance to that with that in mind. Ah, Okay. So when you say bid, so do they actually post opportunities or do you reach out to them, to the companies and ask if they have any staffing needs? A little bit of both. Okay. A little bit of both. It depends on the client, the, cl- the client you're going after. Um, some do the bidding, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's open market at that point. Okay. Some are just like cold calls and it's just, hey, okay, it's good timing and you know, you came in, you're the thousandth customer, and, you know, the balloons fly, and there it is. <laughs> okay. So how did you get, so I know you mentioned earlier that you were in, a, I guess, the top 50th black-owned business in the city, right? Is that correct? Central Ohio. In Central Ohio? Central, correct. How did you accomplish that? Uh, it's just knowing things fall, chips fall where they may. Okay. Um. There's all kind of wars out there. Mm -hmm. And just, we were part of Columbus Business First. Okay. And it was presented to us that we may qualify. Mm -hmm. So you have to submit your information, you know, all the extensive things that they're asking. And 
months later, literally about five months later, that book will come out and you've seen your name on it the first time. You're like, wow. Right. <laughs> you know, it's a surprise. And that's a huge accomplishment. It is to me. Yeah. To me. Yes. No, no, no. Absolutely. Same here. <laughs> I mean, you know, you have accolades that you can speak to, you know, in terms of business. So right. Right. I think that's huge. I mean, top 50 in Central Ohio. Right. That's a big deal because not a lot of people can say that. Correct. And not only that, I'm assuming that once you're going for, you know, trying to get other contracts with different corporations, they look at that like, wow, top 50, you must be doing something right. Right, right. Okay. We so, had some contracts come up because of that. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So as far as like key challenges as a business owner, especially in the staffing industry, what are some of the key challenges? Like that one key challenge that you can think of that stands out in your mind, like, yeah, I can remember in business when that happened, but this is what we did to overcome it. Wow, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so you have different sides of the staff in the industry. Okay. okay. You have the employee side, the temporary associate side, and then you have the client side. Uh -huh. So you got challenges with each one of those, you know. Um, it is so hard, as far as the client side, it is so hard to get a contract, to get a client. You could knock on the door and knock on the door and knock on the door for literally seven years. Mm -hmm. And that 200th time you've been in the business and you've been in contact with this people like month in, month out, you know, touching base. And they finally give you an opportunity just because uh, another agency messed up somehow or, you know, and it could be something small. It could be something huge, mm -hmm. you know. Um, as far as uh, getting that contract, but I don't know when it happens. It's just like it's humbling. Mm -hmm. um, I lost contract. I lost lost focus on that. No, 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 that's okay. So you were talking about just the key challenges and how you overcame them. So there's a corporate side to it, Individual. and then the employee side to it. Well, let me think. Where I was, and where the I was corporate at side was the just to getting get, the contract. Get the yeah. I forget where I was going with it. So I guess you, from what I gathered, you're knocking on the door several times, you Correct. know, for seven years, you're chasing Correct. this one client. Oh, then, then it falls off. Right. Right, right, right. Then finally you get an opportunity because, you know, another tip agency didn't do what they were supposed to do. Correct. Now they need a, another agency to come in and fill it. Correct. So I'm assuming you were that agency that came in. Correct. To save the day. Correct. Okay. So... When you get that opportunity, it's like you got to take advantage of everything. And, you know, you're you're trying to, to I don't want to say work the client, but you're, you're, that's your client. So, mm -hmm. you know, the client's always right. Exactly. You know, so, you know, but as far as the temporary side of it, that's where it ties all in. You don't have control over what goes on at the client. Okay. You know, you do your due diligence on getting the people that they want. Mm -hmm. If they say they want, you know, 10 people and they got to be this type X, Y, Z about them, you got to try to fill that to a T. Mm -hmm. But there are different personalities out there. So when people get out there, it's like, oh, you didn't know that this was going to happen and this happened. And then, you know, when something happens out there, that can walk out the door just as fast as you got the contract. Mm. So is that written in the contract? Like if you're not fulfilling those obligations or fulfilling that criteria, they can terminate the contract? It's usually in a contract where if, if both sides aren't happy or if maybe written for them, if they're not happy, then they can terminate the contract. Uh. And, you know, you can negotiate things, but some things are set in stone. <laughs> right. Some things with certain clients are going to be set in stone. Okay. Yeah. So what would you say was that milestone or turning point in your business? Like that, when you got to that sweet spot where it's like, okay, things look great right now. <laughs> what was that? What was that point? Well, when we started. Okay. I mean, I don't want to sound cocky, but when we started, I, we knew what we had. Okay. And we knew we had uh, the right staff. Uh -huh. We knew we had the right approach. Mm -hmm. We knew that we had the right foundation. Mm -hmm. So as far as the staff, the approach, and the clients that we had to begin with. Okay. From there, we just grew. And we met a lot of meetings. 
And I've told the staff many times that we're going to see success. Mm -hmm. And when you see it, don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. People might be surprised because they're not inside. They don't know what's going on here. Exactly. But when they see it, we already knew what's going to happen. Okay. So if you can answer this, right, what's your approach when it comes to, you know, your clients? Because you think about it, you're going to this corporation, you're trying to find the decision maker. So how do you identify the decision maker and how do you approach the decision maker? <laughs> and I'm asking because a lot of us that are aspiring and new entrepreneurs, right, in our different lines of business, we're thinking about like, I don't even know where to start. I don't right. know who right, to contact. Right. Right. I don't know the approach. You know, just even if you can give just some generic knowledge on how to take that step. Well, the staff industry has changed. It's evolved just like all businesses have evolved now. Exactly. Where um, obviously the staff industry is still brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. Your clients are still brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. Where other think, well, we do have clients that are home, stay at home as well. Um, but 90% of them are going to be brick and mortar. Okay. Um, it's harder to, I don't know where I was going with the brick and mortar. I lost my focus. No, on no, no. Board. It's okay. You said some are, some are brick and mortar. So we were talking about your approach when it comes to getting contracts with corporations. Like when you first start off, you said that was where your success was at. Right. So your success in the beginning, but how do you approach these corporations to even get them to notice you, especially okay, right, as a new right. agency? I got you. I got you. So with the, uh, when you go to, well, it's evolved. So we used to be door to door. Okay. And you pound the pavement, pound the pavement, pound the pavement. You're going to client to client to client to client. Mm -hmm. You might be in one area one day or next area another day, northeast here on Tuesday, southeast on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you're getting a runaround when you go to these places. I mean, they don't, I mean, there are, tens of thousands of staff agencies in central Ohio and Columbus. And it's like people are going to these businesses and they're sick of hearing these, you know, they're sick of this material <laughs> they're getting, you know, you're just, you're just a number. Right. So you're getting the run around nine times out of 10 when you're going to actually nine, nine times out of hundred, you're going to, you're going to get the run around. So you might not know the decision maker mm -hmm. or sometimes you might get that client, get, might get that, this, that decision maker. But that doesn't mean you're going to get that person on the phone. Ooh. That doesn't mean that that person is going to respond to you. Exactly. So it's another another animal. Like sometimes it's luck. Okay. You know, uh, kind of piggybacking on what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. Just that opportunity, that right time. You know, right. you're that thousandth person through the door, and the balloons fall down. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay. So being a CEO yourself, right? I know I, you know, I knocked on your door several times. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but being a CEO, what would you expect with someone approaching you with an opportunity to say, you know what, I can kind of understand how they feel with me knocking on their door. But um, if the shoe is on the other foot, this is how I would want to be approached. So the other aspiring and the new entrepreneurs out there, they know when they go out there and they're coming to knock on Juan's door or anyone else's door, how to properly approach you as a CEO? I mean, professionalism is top. I mean, that's key. That's key. No matter where you're at, you always have to stay professional. Mm -hmm. No matter what you're hearing, no matter what you're seeing, no matter what you're doing, you know, not everybody's going to be nice to you. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> not everyone's going to say the things that you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have to just stay positive and, you know, brush off those ones that you don't want to hear, those mm -hmm. things that you didn't want to hear, you mm -hmm. know. Um, keep on going. Just stay positive. Okay. So what sets you apart from your competitors? One, the minority aspect Two, we do have state contracts um, through the minority aspect as well, the minority avenue. Mm -hmm. um, three, our experience in the business. Uh, there are people in our staffing agency that's been in the staffing agency literally 30-something years. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. that's a long time. Long time. That's a long time. So that's why I say, like, I'm I'm wet and I'm, I'm not new in the game as far as they're concerned. Right. Um and 
just knowing having a good relationship with a lot of our associates as well as solid relationships with the class that we have. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of growth, what do you feel you need to do to stay competitive and to continue to grow? That's a compound, complex answer. Um, I think there are associations, there are staffing um, events that you can go to and kind of stay afloat, okay. kind of know what's going on and get the gist of what's going on because if your head's down and you're not looking up and you're just doing your work, mm -hmm. you're not knowing what's going on around you. You know, you can't, you, you might get lost and get caught up and now you're in a dinosaur business and the world's passing you up, you know, so you got to stay afloat. You got to see what's going on, you know, mm -hmm. and that's in the industry. I mean, in the industry that you're in, you have to stay afloat. Don't, don't fall behind. Right. Don't fall behind. Try to ride that wave. Stay on top of that wave, you know, um, so that's the key thing. I mean, there are a lot of staffing agency uh, seminars and events and things like that that you can go to. A lot of them are going to be out of state, you know, so you just got to take the time. And if you personally can't go, get someone that you can trust to go there, you know, okay. get that information. Yeah, that was going to be my next question, you know, as far as like continuing education and trying to figure out ways to say, how do we stay ahead of the game because a lot of people to your point you know you get in business and you're trying to figure out okay how do i stay up to date on the trends how do i stay up to date on the changes in the industry right. so those conferences and events yeah, those right. are definitely correct. beneficial correct yes okay yes, yes. so outside of just the events are there is there anything else that you do to stay up to date on the trends as it relates to the staffing industry I really am not the type of person that keeps up with the Joneses. Okay. Understood. <laughs> I kind of try to think outside the box myself. Okay. So, you know, I'll, I'm looking at things. I'm like, what can we do to stay a little bit different, to stay marketable, you know, to set ourselves apart from anyone? Mm -hmm. You know, so those are little things. We meet about those things, you know, pretty okay. regularly. So, so... Can you share some of those outside of the box thoughts? Uh, I'll give you a couple. Okay, yeah. I'll right. give you a couple. I mean, <laughs> because other 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 agencies are also evolving to some of these things. Okay. So one thing that, that we talked about and talked about a few years back was becoming an MSP, which is a master service provider. Okay. From there, you're like, it's a different ball game. It's, a, it's staffing on steroids. Okay. You know, it's like, if we, just, a, just an example, if we, had a, if we were MSP, we get a bid and say Amazon. Mm -hmm. We got Amazon bid. Mm -hmm. Now, every, every agency has to come through us. To, to work there. Ah, okay. So, yeah. So, just an example. Like, what do you need to become or to even qualify as an MSP? Well, first you need the knowledge because it's a different ball game than just regular staffing. Okay. So, and that is just extensive. I'm not going to get into that. That's okay. a whole different talk, but <laughs> you have to get into that as far as the knowledge. And then also there's a lot of different material that comes with that and a lot of different software I come with that, so it's a whole different animal. So you really kind of dive off into technology? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, correct. So some of these conferences and, and events that you attend, do they actually walk you through everything that you need to become a certified or be, to become an MSP? A lot of these conferences will do that. Okay. Um, but some, I mean, just, just pay attention. You can gather things, gather things, and just connect the dots, you know? Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you have to pay for the events? Are they free? Uh, you have to pay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Almost nothing in, in life is free, but, you know, you're especially going there, and then, you know, there's a lot of food there and different events. It's not just, uh, you know, it's a lot of things to do in those conferences. Okay. So why don't you give us a success story? <laughs> like that success story that now obviously you had a lot of success in the beginning, but just something else I was saying the last five years that really stands out in your mind to say, man, this is why I started this 
the staffing agency. Let me see if I have a particular one. I mean, there's a few, I, I would think. Okay. So looking at your staff and if your staff is happy, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of our staff has been together for a while. Now, we've had some shakeups, okay. but staff, you have a steady staff no matter what industry you're in, no matter what business you're in. Having a solid staff together for years speaks volumes. Absolutely. So that's loyalty. Mm -hmm. And there's not too much loyalty nowadays. So that's true. That says a lot. And then when you get people that, um, another, another example is we've had a lot of different temporary associates that, for any other term, are kind of like lifers. Mm hmm. They, you know, they're like professional, temporary associates. It's like, why won't you just stay on this job? You know what I mean? Like different places want to hire them. They uh -huh. go through the hiring process, then they'll just walk off the job. Wow. Just stop it. You know, just and just we'll go through another job. Okay. Then they'll come back later, like a year later, and they're still with you. Right. So when you hear a certain people, certain temporary associates come back, mm -hmm. and they you get them a job. And they say, oh, thank you for this. And they've been through, you've seen them go through 15 different jobs. Mm -hmm. And they are, they're get hired on. It's like, it's worth it. Right. Before <laughs> they find that right one. It's worth it. Okay. That's well worth it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense, you know, especially if you don't know what you want to do. So it's like, okay, I have to go through the cycle, especially for the person that probably didn't have a goal. Right. Except right. I need a job. Right. 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 It's like, okay, you know what? Nope. Sorry. Why that didn't work? Right. Place me somewhere else. Right. Quick. <laughs> go through the cycle. And it's like, oh, man, I actually enjoy this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So but it's, you, it's a little different because the ones I'm talking about are like they've been through maybe literally 20 jobs. Okay. 20 different clients. Okay. It's like, I don't have anything else to offer you. <laughs> literally. like. Right. <laughs> but then they stick on to that one. It's like, oh, it's worth it. I right. mean, that's just... You know, because you see their struggle. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes a struggle that you, you're like, you like, could this could have been avoided. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. So when they stick on, it's like, oh, man, that's it's great. Right. Great feeling. So Success do you, story. Do you have any programs in place to, like, help people that may be struggling in these different areas? So, like, let's just say resume writing, interviewing skills, um, building a brand or things like that, you know, to kind of help that person curve that, the challenge that they have of bouncing from job to job. Like, hey, if we help you enhance these skills or tune these skills, then maybe we can keep you somewhere where you become a valued employee and then it increases the brand of Sterling Staffing. Sure, sure. Um, of course, all of our staff, okay. basically, uh, is willing to help anybody at any given time. Mm -hmm. um, on the same note, on the other hand, like you, you can't help everybody. Mm -hmm. Not everybody wants help. You can't talk to everybody. That's true. So you'll know those people when they want help. Mm -hmm. You know, they may be the, the caller that keeps calling and keeps calling and keeps calling, or they may be that caller that just call once a week. Mm -hmm. But you just got that feel. You know, or so you might place them, and that might be the twenty-first job you place them on, and you talk them like, "Hey, I have nothing else for you. Like, mm -hmm. this is it. Right? If you mess this one up, like, <laughs> I have literally nothing else I can offer you. Right? You know, and no problem. I have no problem with talking to anyone, like, and, and helping them out, whatever they may need to succeed. So now I have. Okay. Yeah. So, so helping them. Do you find that it helps with some people? It's few and far between, but it does, you know. Okay. <laughs> it's few and far between. Nice. Yeah. So give us a, a failure or a setback. You know, that one that you will tell 20 years from now to say, I can remember one time in my business when this happened. Like, it was just a gut punch. I can't remember a particular one, but we those happen. I okay. mean... Just like I tell you, when you get a client, mm -hmm. we've all lost clients the same way. Mm -hmm. 
and it's not of your doing. You know, everything's going well. And then maybe you get an email at night where you're already gone out the office or you get a voicemail, you know, you come into work in a voicemail or 10 o'clock in the morning, you get an irate customer on the phone and he's like, he's done. Mm-hmm. They're done. It's like, you know, there's no talking to him. There's no whatever, whatever. So, but I don't have a particular one because it's happened. Okay. It's happened a few times. Okay. It's happened more than a few times, but. <laughs> so how do you, how do you rebound from those times? Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm big into sports. Okay. So I'm going to relay that to sports. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You got to have a short memory. Okay. I mean, you can't mm. let, you can't let negativity stick with you. Okay. You let negativity stick with you. I mean, you're going to be down all day, you know? Right. Like I'm on to the next thing. Okay. You know, I'm going to learn from my mistakes. Mm-hmm. If I can, I mean, if we had any control over what happened mm-hmm. and if any of it's our fault, you got to look at yourself honestly and say that, you know, and fix it. Exactly. If not, you're going to fail. Right. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you had to reset and start Sterling Staffing all over again, would you do anything differently? No. Actually, I would not. Okay. The process that we went through... It's just been phenomenal. Okay. Um, you know, literally started from the bottom and working your way up. We're not there yet. Mm-hmm. There's still a lot to come. Okay. We're not done. <laughs> so how much time would you say you have to spend in the industry to be seasoned, especially in staffing? Uh, honestly, that's a trick question. Okay. Because... I think for some, it might happen overnight. Okay. And it could. Mm -hmm. Some, it might take 20 years. I'd say anywhere in between. Okay. You know? So what what separates the successful from the people who are going to struggle? So I guess we're kind of taking the path of the advice that you would give to say, hey, with you being seasoned and in, in business for 10 years, these are the things that you need to avoid and these are the things that you need to embrace. I think in life, you have to be honest. Honest with yourself first off. Mm-hmm. If you're not honest with yourself, you're not going to get, you're not gonna get far. That's true. So know your faults, know your limits. Mm-hmm. Know what you can do and don't doubt yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, Go with it 100%. You have to give 100% in life to get 100% back. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's the best I can really give you. I mean, that's like looking in that mirror and just be honest with yourself. I mean, don't see what you want to see. See what it is. Okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. And take from it and grow from it. Learn from it. Take this, take this, take this, and, you know, have a bigger picture in your head. Okay. Don't have tunnel vision. So to the young one out there that wants to start the next staffing agency, if he came to you and said he's, let's just, just an example, he's 22, he or she, they're hungry. Right. And they say, I want to start a staffing agency. If you had to lay out just a high level plan, what would you tell him? I'd tell him two things. First (laughs) off, first off is a young one, so change your name. (laughs) <laughs> and get out of Columbus. Now I'm playing. <laughs> Why is that? I'm playing. No, no, okay, there's, okay. There's, there's plenty. There's plenty of room to eat for everybody. So okay. Um, I mean, anything that I can help them with. I mean, there's going to be a lot of questions from all over. Mm-hmm. They might have a good solid plan, but part of business is location part of successful business location. Mm. I mean, we've seen how many, uh, we've seen it time and time again. Uh, the McDonald's, the Sheets is now, they are strategically placed. Absolutely. You know, on a corner. It might be the southeast corner. It may be the, the, the northwest corner. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's strategically placed for a reason. That's true. So you, you got to have that that placement. So everything comes in the, in the uh, play there. So. They could have a, a in-depth question, okay, 
as far as the backbone of the company, mm-hmm. or they could have something as far as just the glitz and glamour of it, you mm-hmm. know, so you don't know. I mean, I'm willing to help anybody. It doesn't matter. I'm not the one that's going to turn away competition. Mm-hmm. Competition helps me. Absolutely. You know? That's true. <laughs> if I didn't have a competition, I mean, I guess I'd be rich, but it gets me going. Okay. So... I'm going to play the, the role of young Juan. And I come to you and I say, all right, Mr. Lee, I want to start my staffing agency. So from what I've gathered from you, I need to have a plan first. Correct. Come up with a name. I need to find a building. I need to find staff, some people that can actually help me facilitate everything. I need to find people that are looking for opportunities, but I also need to find a company that's willing to give me a chance. And if they have a gap that needs to be filled, if they'll give me an opportunity or our company an opportunity to fill that gap. And if so, I'm going out and finding reliable people that matches the skill set that they want. Tell those people like, hey, come with us. We're going to strategically place you, place you based on your skill set, but also based on what they need. Kind of play matchmaker. Correct. Build that reputation not only with our with the clients, but also the corporate clients to make that connection. And that's how I can start my staffing agency. For what did I miss? I, I mean. That is it, the nutshell. Okay. There's always going to be the intri- the different things that 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 you have to do. That you know, um, you know, getting your contracts and how you present your contracts, and you know, I'm not the contract person. Okay. I do have the book over over, but I have someone that fills them out. Mm. You know, so you need these different pieces like that. You know. Um, but you did say that, the, you know, the different employees, but there are strategic places that you need that you, you may not have the knowledge in. Hopefully you have some kind of knowledge in. You don't, hopefully you'll get it mm-hmm. and you're willing to because it's your company. You should learn the ins and outs of your company. But, um, yeah, you basically had it in, in a nutshell. Okay. Yeah. You, but you know what I, what I love about, this conversation is that you're def you're you definitely speak like a CEO because you're a visionary, and I think that's the definition of a CEO is to have the vision, but then also have the team that it sounds like you've built the team to execute the vision to say okay, I may not have everything, but I'm going to hire the people to your point like the contracts and stuff like that. What I don't know, I put people in place. To do those things. There it is. <laughs> but again, spoken like a true CEO because you're finding people to fill those gaps to actually make it a well oiled machine. It's got to run well. Okay. It's got to run well. I mean, you can have good tires all you want. Right. If you're on the engine, it's not going to do anything. Very true. <laughs> okay. Right. So it sounds like you don't have you don't have any problems with delegation. No. Okay. No. That's no. good. That's, I mean, that's part of the job. Comes with the territory. Okay. And if that's going to help the machine run, mm-hmm. you know, it's got to be done. Okay. So let's talk about balance, right? Okay. You have this great company that you're running that's been around for ten years, and you have your family, right? Are you married? No. Okay. Any kids? I have kids. I have two kids. I have. I have six kids. Okay. Between myself and my girlfriend. Gotcha. Six so kids. blended family? Yes, blended family. Correct. Okay. So so with that, with you being so busy, how do you balance time for the business, time for yourself, time for your girlfriend, time for your kids? Well, I got to back up because I can't leave these out. This is important. Okay. <laughs> Between us, we have four grandkids. Okay. Right? So I can't leave that out. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, well, okay. Add the grandkids in there. <laughs> well, for the most part, in a perfect world, mm-hmm. When in the day, in the business day, mm-hmm. when that's done, it's done. Mm. Shut it off. Okay. Now, you being in that position, mm-hmm. you know, the title that you have, 
you're never truly done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true. But you're done as much as possible. Okay. You know, don't. There's no sense of looking at emails. I do pick at emails, but I'm not going to get into it mm-hmm. unless I have to. Makes sense. Phone is on, mm-hmm. but hopefully it doesn't ring. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just to have that true separation. Right. Okay. Right. Got to have it. Home is home, and business is business. Okay. Right. That's a that's a clear cut separation of when I'm home I can I can focus on my family because you know I had a lady a lady that came on the podcast and she said <laughs> so she's a baker and she said there are times where I'm sitting on the couch and I'm still baking yeah see yeah. right 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 <laughs> right and when she initially when she said it I'm like it took me like a half a second to pick up on right. It. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Because yeah. I can re- th- think about times I just kind of zone out to where I'm sitting down watching a movie right. with my wife. But I'm thinking about everything I have to do tomorrow morning. Right. Where I'm not really locked in with what we're doing in the moment. Right. So, right. no, that's, that's great advice for sure. Right. And then also, I would say you have to, you have, to have an outlet or outlets. Okay. Okay. Like... In life, you get inundated in a lot of different things, and it'll just drag you in there and suck you in, and you don't know you're being sucked in that far deep as far as you are. Exactly. And before you know it, you're like a zombie. You're just like zoned out. You're you're not in tune with anything around you. You know, kids don't know you anymore. You know what right. I mean? Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, there's some outlets. One of my big outlets. I'll give you one of mine. Actually, it's it'll probably surprise you. Mm-hmm. I have a garden. I have a greenhouse. Okay. And it grounds me. Okay. You know, I've learned not to be surprised. I mean, there's a the lady, again, going back to the baking lady, she is a part-time minister. Right. And she's a baker. But you know what she loves doing in her spare time? What's that? Shooting pool. Shooting pool. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And okay. I asked, I said, are you a pool shark? She was like, well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that was surprising. So right. with you having a garden, no, right. that's not surprising. So the garden's actually during the, obviously during the spring and summer months. Uh-huh. But the greenhouse is all year long. Okay. Yeah. So what do you plant? In the garden or greenhouse? Both. Okay, so the garden, you'd have different things like kale, you have carrot, uh, not carrots, you have um, celery, the green peppers, uh, uh, different kind of peppers, onions, tomatoes, watermelon, cantaloupe. Um, also in the garden, as far as not planting, I have grapevines. Um, yeah. Okay. So where did the green thumb come from? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It just happened. I don't know. Okay. Where'd I didn't grow up that way. <laughs> Where'd you start? When? Yeah. Uh, probably about seven, eight years ago. Okay. Yeah. What inspired you to even start gardening? I bought my house. Uh, there is a fenced-in area, mm-hmm. four-foot fence pretty nice size as okay. far as that like it's yeah it's a nice size area like it's over it's a oversized garden mm-hmm. for all that okay and i wonder what that the last owner of the house did over there like it looked like it could be like for a dog or dogs just to roam around and have that nice area mm-hmm. the neighbor said they didn't have a dog mm-hmm. so i was like wondering you know and i'm like oh well that's a garden mm-hmm and that's what I did with it. Wow. The garden. But then I also wanted to take it a step further. Okay. And that's when I got the greenhouse. And the greenhouse is in the garden now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, I can see why you would do that, you know, because it's it's just you. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. peaceful. Yeah. Hell yeah. You're kind of in your zone. Yeah. I guess you can call it like your zen moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. And it's rewarding. I mean. The fruits of your labor. Yeah, literally. Yeah, right. <laughs> so in the greenhouse, I have pineapple. Yeah. Wow. Clementines. Okay. Uh, oranges, grapefruit, lemons, coffee. That's it. So essentially, you grow your own produce for yeah. the most part. Basically. I, I, it doesn't produce to the level that I'm going to be able to live off of it. Right. But 
I eat off it. Right. Yeah. I mean, anytime you want a fresh one, you know, fresh whatever, you know, you can go out to your garden or your greenhouse and greenhouse. Yeah. Okay. And actually, everything that I just named is fruiting right now, has fruit right now. Besides, well, actually, there's a couple of beans on the coffee plants. But yeah, there's lemons out there. There are oranges, okay. clementines. There's two pineapples out there. Pineapple. Grapefruit. Yeah. Right now. Okay, so excuse my ignorance. So this <laughs> pineapple, is it growing on a tree? No, so oh, a bush. Or <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really don't right. know. I get it. I'm just thinking it. about I this heavy it. pineapple. Right. You know? Yeah. So it grows unlike a plant. Okay. The plant is like kind of like this, but okay. harder. Okay. Um, and it grows up in the center of it. Okay. And when it grows, like, you won't see it. Like, you'll be nothing, nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. And you got to look down the middle of it. Look down the middle of that plant. And then there'll be, like, a little disc that forms. Mm -hmm. And it's colorful. So it's just one pineapple per plant? One pineapple per plant. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That's why I said that. Like, I, yeah. obviously, I've never looked into it. I didn't know the, the, knowledge, the education behind it. Right. But just thinking that it's growing off a stem, I'm like, no, it had to be a nah. tree to support something like that. Yeah, it just comes out, and it's in the middle of it. It just comes right, and it just holds it right there in the middle of it. Okay. The first, uh, the first two times, uh -huh. the pineapple was too heavy. Uh, so I had to prop a stick in between, like, so it hold it up a little bit. But, right. yeah, that thing wanted to fall over. <laughs> Man, that's, that's pretty cool. That's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's very sure. different. Yeah, And it's juicy. It's juicy right. water. Juicy uh uh, pineapple you ever want to taste right yeah okay yeah so give us some closing words <laughs> whatever you want to share i mean obviously not knowing that you know it, it sounds like you're definitely connected to your garden your greenhouse your family definitely family or oriented business minded so just taking all of that collectively close us out <sighs> I don't really know what to say with that, man. I mean, I've been blessed um, being in a situation that I've been in um, and I'm still in. Um, just make the most of your moments. You know, take every moment in and, and stay positive. Um, I love nature. Okay. So just being out in nature, man, it's just grounding. It's rewarding. Mm -hmm. That's the... So I do have to say more about this because I love nature so much. I have different trees as well. Okay. I plant a lot of fruit trees. They're good for the earth. They're good for the wind. They're good for the air. Mm -hmm. And I get fruit off of it. Okay. You know? What kind of fruit trees do you have? I have two plum. Okay. Actually, right now I have three plum. I have two peach. Okay. I have a nectarine. And I have two cherry trees. Man. You have a big yard. <laughs> for all of these trees yeah. plus the greenhouse <laughs> in the garden yeah okay. that's cool i love plums yeah man yeah. do you sell them no i just eat them oh, okay family comes over and gets them and i give them to neighbors and stuff yeah nice yeah. okay yeah. cool um so if anyone wanted to contact you how would they contact you any social media website phone number i am on linkedin sterling staffing services i'm also uh we do have Instagram and Facebook. I personally do not do Instagram or Facebook, so um, I don't have the the hashtag or whatever those. I don't have that. Okay. Um, as far as that, uh, to look up Sterling Staffing Services, we are www.sterlingcols, like the abbreviation for Columbus. C is in cat, O as in O. L is in Larry, S is in Sam, dot com. Okay. All right. Perfect. So as you can see, this episode was full of value, right? So not just focus on just the family aspect. I mean, the business aspect, but the family aspect as well. And also ways to take advantage of, of nature, right? Just having something simple to do outside of work, outside of family, something that makes you comfortable, something that you can do to bring yourself back down to a level of peace. As you can see, Juan has got, he's, he has his hands in gardening, the greenhouse, the different trees, gave us a little bit of education and knowledge, at least for me. 
So just something to think about as an entrepreneur, as that aspiring new and existing entrepreneur, just thinking about ways that you can balance out your life. And if you can't balance it, just ensuring that you're prioritizing your moments. You can see Juan prioritizes his business. And when he's done with business, he prioritizes his family. And when he's in the garden, he's in the garden. And we'll make sure to look up the handles, the social media handles and contact information. Include all of that down in the description. And we want to thank you for joining the Let's Evolve for Tomorrow podcast, where we help aspiring new and existing entrepreneurs excel to the next level by inviting other aspiring new and existing entrepreneurs to the podcast to provide knowledge, information and education on how to get to the next level. And we'll see you next time.